Uh, you know, I was thinking yesterday, uh, you know, I, I, I promised you kind of positive shows on Fridays. I know I, I don't live, always live up to it. But I was thinking, okay, what, what can I talk about that's positive? And I'm sitting and I'm watching TV yesterday. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't watching this live, but the, I was watching the Olympics and not live. It was, it was in the evening NBC primetime Olympics. And I was watching Simone Biles and uh, her teammate Suni Lee and, and, and the Brazilian, um, the Brazilian um, gymnast. And, I mean, I was struck by how amazing they are. These are young women. It used to be in gymnastics, it was girls. Now they're mostly women. They're in their 20s. Simone Biles is 27. And they are doing things that are just stunning. Uh, Simone Biles does regularly things that no other woman or man, uh, no other woman athlete does in the world. She can jump higher than pretty much any other male athlete. Um, and it's just, you know, stunning how, how beautiful their routines are, how stunningly talent, you know, able they are. It's not talent even because God, did they work hard on this. And in the midst of this controversy around the boxing and all the, you know, the, the brouhaha about it and all the people complaining and talking and bitching and this and that and, In, and the focus on that, instead of take a breath and just watch how beautiful, you know, the execution that these athletes have, just watch the skill, watch the brilliance of what they do. And this is not, you know, people think it's, it's this is all physical, it's just muscle, it's not. I mean, think about the mental focus you have to get into to stand on one of those beams. I don't know how wide they are. They're super narrow. And do flips on them and turn on them and go this way and go that way and not fall. I couldn't even get up on the thing. Never mind fall. Never mind flip on it or do anything. I couldn't do the stuff they do on that beam on the floor. And 99% of the world couldn't. Or the floor exercise that Simone Biles does, where she basically gets up over 12 feet into the air while she is twisting and turning. It is just stunning. The vaults. I mean, I, I did gymnastics when I was a little kid, and we jumped over the horse and stuff like that. But these girls or women... They, 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 they jump off this thing, they twist in the air, they tumble in the air, they do all this thing, and then they land on their feet. I mean, my neck would be broken many, many times over. It's truly stunning, beautiful, amazing, thrilling, exciting. Why would anybody want to spend even one iota of their time on, on the controversies, the problems, the challenges, the stupidity uh, of, of things people are doing, the negativity that is em embraced by everybody, when there is so much beauty here. Wanda Freeman says the surfing is amazing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's almost like they, they picked, I, I'm sure they picked this place in Tahiti, possibly because it's, Tahiti is French, but also... Because this place in Tahiti, the waves just break perfectly. So you have these perfect tunnels in the waves. And the surfers are amazing how they ride those waves inside these tunnels of water. And, and with, the, with the coral reef not far away, so it's, it's a little dangerous. They just have complete command of the water. They have complete command of what is going on around them. I mean, the skill level, the talent, the focus, 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 focus. I mean, we live in a world in which people's attention span is shrinking to milliseconds, and these athletes can control the emotions. And one of the things you notice with the gymnastics is let's say they're doing a floor exercise or, or beam. The beam is the hardest, I think. They're on this beam, 
And in the meantime, some of us in the gym, the competition for the floor exercise is going on. So there's music blowing, people are cheering and clapping and getting all excited. And I have to focus on this beam and there's stuff going on all around me. And I have to shut that out completely, completely shut it out and be 100% focused on the activity that I'm engaged in, be completely in the moment and bring all my skill level and all my muscle control and everything that I have has to be completely oriented to the activity that I'm engaged in right now. I mean, how many of us can actually do that on anything? And look, they can slip and really hurt themselves, really hurt themselves. So it's pretty amazing and beautiful and a testament to the human mind and the human spirit. You watch uh, Katie Ledecky swim the 1,500 meters, 1,500 meters to swim in competition, the longest race in swimming and, and one that women have only recently started swimming in, uh, in the Olympics. And Katie Ledecky just dominates. But you look at her split times, pretty much every 50 meters of the 1500 meters is the same speed. It's stunning the command she has over her body, over her pace, the ability for f about 15 minutes to 15 minutes, for 15 minutes to stay focused and engaged and on pace and to have it every one of those laps to be almost identical. I was a swimmer. I swam and I, I get bored swimming. It's one of the reasons I stopped. It bores me. But the focus you need for that, the effort you need for that, the mental effort. Now, think about uh, uh, what's uh, uh, um, Simone Biles. In the Tokyo Olympics, she had a mental breakdown. She says she got the twiddles, tweezers, whatever, where, she, you know, you lose your spatial orientation. And it was completely mental. The stress, the, the, it just got to her. And to come back from that and to do what she did, the strength of character is just admirable. And then the, the, the twisties, the twisties, she called it, right? The twisties. And then the other um, a gymnast, Lee, the, the, the Asian-American, she, she had kidney disease just a year ago. If you saw photos of her, she was like almost twice the size because of the disease caused her to just swell up. And she was in hospital. And, and at first they didn't know what it was, and then she had two different kidney diseases and they had to get rid of them. And a year later, she's winning, you know, she, she, she's um, uh, getting a, a bronze medal in the all-round gymnastics. <laughs> it's just unreal. And how good they are, how capable they are, and, and the kind of effort and work and focus that they need to engage in. And again, in contrast to the complainers, the... The, 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 the complainers who constantly are complaining about, you know, this athlete or that athlete or the opening ceremony or this or that. All, I mean, all with a basis, but in the big picture of things. There's so much good. There's so much excitement. There's so much energy, focus. Why, fo why spend any time, more time than you have to on the negative? Just let it go, people. Let it go. Life is too short. I, 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 I tell you regularly, you live once. You don't get a second shot. You don't get any second back. Sitting on Twitter and complaining gains you literally nothing. Watching Simone Biles do what she does inspires, inspires, gives you energy to go, go for it in your own life. Focus on the energy to hell with the wasted tweets. 
So focus on the good. Dedicate time to the beautiful. Now, you know, and this is not just in sports. I mean, I, I'm watching the Olympics. I do, we, my wife and I do it every four years. We, we, we stay up. I mean, for us these days, it's late. We, you know, we, we go to sleep relatively early these days relative to when we used to go to bed. But we stay up late, and, and we love it. We just love it. It, 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 it just this, you know, you, you don't have to watch the whole thing. You watch the highlights. Just the, the expression of excellence and brilliance. So, you know, I watch the NBA Finals. I watch the Olympics. Sometimes I watch, I, I, I sometimes watch the Super Bowl. Sometimes I'm off of football lately. I certainly watch the World Cup soccer. We watch the European Finals and the uh, American Finals, America Cup Finals that just happened. I, I like to see sports at its peak, the best, the very, very best. And, and it's, I find it inspiring. And, and the more you know about the kind of prep the, the, these athletes have to go through, the dedication they have, the focus they have. I mean, think about it this way. Imagine you decided you had a goal. Imagine you had something you wanted to achieve in your life, a, a, a career in, in your career, for example. And you said, I am going to dedicate myself to this like Michael Phelps dedicated himself to swimming. I mean, that would be a life changer for almost all of us. And or, or I'm going to do it like Simone Biles does gymnastics. I'm going to dedicate the focus, the energy, the, the single-minded. And look, and Simone Biles is married. I think she's married. Yes, she's married. Um, it's not like she's given up life, just does gymnastics, nothing else. So, you know... This is what having a central purpose looks like. And that's what I, that, I guess that's what I like about this. For, at least for a while in their life, because they, they can't be their central purpose forever, but at least for a while in their life, these young women and men have a central purpose that they are fully, unequivocally dedicated towards. They work unbelievably hard. They, they devote unbelievable mental an emotional focus and energy towards it. They shut out all distractions and they work to be the absolute best that they can be. The absolute best that they can be at what they're doing. And they will not succeed if they are liars and cheaters and stealers. And they will not succeed through shortcuts. They will not succeed if they think short term, everything they do has to be long term. It has to be rational. It has, they have to acknowledge reality and live by the rules of gravity. Can't ignore gravity. So sports gives you a concretization of what it takes to be successful in a career. What it takes to take your central purpose in life seriously. Because they live their lives in public. Like, we've got a lot of admirable CEOs who live amazing lives and have amazing careers. We don't know much about them. We don't get them on television. We don't see them making the tough decisions. We don't see them, you know... Uh, uh, in that office where, where Steve Jobs figured, you know, decided on the iPhone. We don't see those moments. With athletes, we do. We see them execute, but we also have documentaries about the training and all this. We don't see any of that with CEOs or engineers or other central purposes, other focuses. So embrace it. Em embrace sports as a means by which to recommit yourself to excellence, to recommit yourself to career, and to recommit yourself to, to greatness, to beauty and greatness. So, yeah, Wanda Freeman says, human capacity is only limited by the laws of physics. It sounds like something David Deutsch would say. <laughs> um, but you're absolutely right, Wanda Freeman. 
So, but it's, but of course it goes beyond sports. You know, and, and you, we don't see it really when it comes to business. We don't have it celebrated. We don't have, but you know, every, this is why Steve Jobs was so influential because he, he, he made a spectacle of his achievements, right? He, he had Apple announces and he'd get up on stage and he'd do, a, he'd do the, what's called the dog and pony show, but it inspired us. He brought beauty and grace to it. He brought self-esteem to it. He brought drama to it, announcing him new products. And he created an audience and a buzz and standing ovations. And, you know, it was, you know, and one more thing, right? And, and he, had, he had it down. And for a brief period, we had a sense of, of, of business as drama and business as sport. We don't have a Steve Jobs anymore, and, and that drama, you know, needs a personality like his to, to create. So we need to create that drama in our own lives. I mean, walk around and admire the world in which you live. It's beauty. It's achievements. It's success. Yes, you can walk around town and think constantly how much better it could be. How much better it could be if we were free. How much better it could be if there was no zoning. How much, and you know, you need to devote some time to that because it is true. But it's much more productive and inspiring to walk around and look at the positives. Look at the beautiful. Look at the amazing. Look at the awe-inspiring. And there's plenty of it. There's plenty of it. You know, I don't know, I was in the mall the other day, and I noticed, we're in Puerto Rico, of course, that in the, you know, the booths in the middle of the mall where they sell all kind of knickknacks and stuff like that. Well, in Puerto Rico, they have a number of companies competing, one next to the other, with booths in the middle of the mall, selling this new battery technology. So basically selling, selling these big, big batteries that you can charge up. So, uh, and you can, when there's a power outage, you can charge pretty much anything because they, you know, for, for a few hours, because they've got this massive capacity, nothing like in a, for a thousand bucks, you, you, it's not a generator that can run your own home, but it's only a thousand dollars. And, it, you know, you can run a lot on it. You can run a lot. And I don't remember seeing those even five years ago. And now they're everywhere, and there are a number of companies competing with them. Tesla has batteries. Uh, 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 Anchor, which is a, a company you buy a lot of computer knickknacks, and uh, a, a number of others. There were like a number of them out there competing, and I was like thinking, you know, I should, I should, this is cool. This is so amazing. I mean, they're making it, you know, hurricanes and stuff like that. They're making life much more achievable, uh, much more enjoyable, much more, this is good. <laughs> One three three four five. Bob just said, "I blocked myself from accessing Twitter for the next twenty four hours." Thanks for the motivation, Chiron. I, I love that. I love that. I mean, take one day a week, no Twitter. One day a week, no news, no Twitter. I mean, only your Ron Brooks show. That's it. That's the only thing you're allowed to listen to. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just. Think of how much better your life is and how much more productive it is. If you, I mean, I'm not saying don't do it at all, but just do a lot less of it. Uh, I, I was talking to a friend of mine about, you know, the other thing about battery technology. Battery technology is just amazing in its implications. I mean, think about, do you guys have scooters where you live? Um, think about the scooters... Uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of scooters here. Scooters are amazing. I mean, it's amazing technology, not just scooters. You have all kinds of battery-driven uh, transportation. Not cars, but stuff you can rent with your phone and uh, iPhone, and uh, you can just get on and, and, and ride. And why didn't they exist 10 years ago and 20 years ago? And the reason is, is we didn't have 
powerful enough motors that were small enough and we didn't have batteries that would last long enough to make it viable. The, the, the engines would have to be big and uh, they would be cumbersome and uh, the battery would give you a five minute ride and you would be out. And here you are, batteries are now small, powerful, motors, efficient motors that are small and powerful. And, and you got all these scooters. Now, it's not a big deal, but, you know, I think most of us just take it for granted. Oh, scooters. Okay, they're there. I don't know where they came from. They're there. Good. Let's keep going. Not realizing the work, the effort, the focus, the energy that I'd go into that without even knowing it was going into that. Uh, that had to go into producing this stuff and the technology and advances and progress that we're making. And if allowed to, there's no end to that progress. There's no end to how wealthy we can become, how successful we can become, how much greatness can be achieved. So celebrate the technology around you. Celebrate the wealth that is around you. Celebrate the, the beauty that exists out there. And celebrate the, 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 the people with the skill and the talent and the dedication to entertain us through sports and other forms of entertainment uh, the way that they do. And who, and the people, even more importantly, who dedicated their lives to building these amazing things, the, the, the technology that makes our lives so much better, the drugs that make us younger and make us... Um, healthier and, 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 and make us live so much longer and, and in, much, in so much better shape. It, it is to them that we must be thankful and, and um, again, just thinking about that is inspiring. So dedicate some of your time to thinking about it. Troy, thank you. Troy, on top of doing the 50 Memberships have just done 500 Australian dollars. Thank you, Troy. Really, really, really appreciate it. Again, I'm, I'm hoping uh, we can meet in Australia. Hopefully, you will come to the Brisbane conference December 6th to 8th. Anybody else interested, please come. And again, thank you, Troy, uh, for making this show possible um, without contributions from uh, listeners like Troy, this, we couldn't be doing this. There, was, there would be no way to do what we do. So, you know, here's my challenge. Um, uh, not to make a comparison, but Ayn Rand used to send Leonard Peikoff on, on um, causality walks where you went a walk and you found instances of causality. Of course, it, it, the, the instances of causality are everywhere all around us. You don't even have to go on a walk. But it's a way to concretize an abstract concept. It's a way to make it real for you. And I would say, go on beauty walks. Go on achievement walks. Go on greatness walks. Go on a walk where you identify all the beautiful things. All the things that are testament to human achievements. Go on a walk like that. And I think it'll change uh, your orientation towards life and, to, and towards what's going on in the world. Uh, you know, if you, if you can just devote a few hours every week to the good, the good, it, it really will change your, your whole approach, energy level, focus, ability. We live in, in many respects, dark times, but we also live in amazing times. And sadly, for whatever reason, we spend most of our time with the darkness. And what I suggest is make an effort, make a conscious effort, a real effort, to spend some time on the goodness, on the light, on the positives, on, on the success, on achievement. And beauty, beauty, beauty is part of that, right? And, and anyway, I, I was inspired by uh, Biles, Simone Biles, and by the Olympics more generally, and about achievement more generally. Uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the Olympics. I'm looking forward to the, uh, I think the, uh, 
what is it? The uh, the running and the uh, the jumping competitions, particularly the running. I like. I actually my favorite running is the long distance running. Uh, the long distance. Um, uh, the long distance races because there's there's amazing strategy in those. So I'm looking forward to like the 1500 and the 5000 and the 10,000. Those are a lot of fun to watch. Um, marathons less because. By the time you get to kind of the decisive point, and you, you don't watch the whole marathon, it's kind of over. The nice thing about five and 10,000 is they're, in the, they're in, the, in the stadium, and you actually can see them. And there's the guy who sits in the back and only in the last few laps moves forward. There's the guy who leads in the front. I mean, there are all kinds of strategies, and different ones have different strategies. The relays are exciting. So yeah, it's just uh, I, I like the running, the running, uh, the running activities. Um, the running, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I like track and field, and I'm looking forward to that starting, I guess, tomorrow. Maybe it started today, but uh, that's going to be good. I'm going to be in Europe uh, on their time zone watching it you know, when, uh, when once we get to Spain.